What's up everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video, we're gonna talk about equivalence relations, but first, in order to make sure we fully understand equivalence relations, we're gonna talk a little bit about relations. So if you're already familiar with these, you can skip ahead, I'll have the video all time stamped out for you, but it's really important we understand this concept. And it turns out there are two important types of relations that come up a lot in math. The first is called a function, and the second is called an equivalence relation, which is what we're gonna talk about in this video. So a relation, we typically denote it as capital R, from a set A to a set B is a subset of, this is called the Cartesian product of A and B. So if you're unfamiliar with this, that's okay, I'm gonna describe it. In other words, R is a set of ordered pairs where the first coordinate of each pair belongs to A, and the second coordinate of each pair belongs to B. And that's exactly what the Cartesian product means. The Cartesian product of A and B is a set of ordered pairs, right, where we take each element from A and pair it with each element from B, okay? And a relation is a subset of that Cartesian product. So it could be the whole Cartesian product itself, or it could be a proper subset. All right, so if a, B, if this ordered pair is in the relation, then we say that A is related to B and we write A is related to B using this notation, okay? So these two things really mean the same thing. They are equivalent, really, right? A, B is in the relation if and only if A is related to B. Two different ways of saying the same thing, okay? So here's an example. If we define the set A, as the set containing x, y, and z, and the set B is the set containing one, two, and three, then here's an example of a relation from A to B. So we have this set of ordered pairs where each of the first coordinates come from A and each of the second coordinates come from B. Now there's a lot of different relations we could define. Again, we could take the whole Cartesian product, which would be what? x1, x2, x3, right? These are all ordered pairs. y1, y2. We could take every possible one and that would be a relation. Or we could take a proper subset like this and guess what? We don't even have to use each element, right? We don't have to use here. We see that x, y, z, and 1, 2, 3 are all used, but we can actually define another relation. So let's call this maybe r1. That doesn't have to be the case. We can define this relation where we say, well, let's just have x is related to 1 and x is related to 2, something like this, right? It's any subset of that Cartesian product. So even though we're not using every element from A, nor are we using every element from B, this is still a relation. So before we get to defining an equivalence relation, there's an important piece of terminology that I want to unpack. We often say define a relation on some set, right? So what exactly does that mean? By a relation on a set S, we mean a relation from S to S. So from that set to itself. In other words, a relation on a set S is a collection of ordered pairs whose first and second coordinates belong to S. So it's a subset of the Cartesian product of S and itself, okay? So for example, this here is a relation on the set containing one, two, three, and four, right? All of the first coordinates belong to S and all of the second coordinates belong to S. So this is common terminology you're gonna hear, define a relation on a set. It's important we know what this means. Now let's get to defining equivalence relations. So a relation R defined on a set S is called an equivalence relation. If R is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So now we have to unpack what the hell these things mean. What is reflexive, symmetric, transitive? So these are all properties that describe relations, okay? So let's unpack each of these. A relation R, defined on a set S, is called reflexive if X is related to X for every X in S. So what does this mean? How do we determine if a relation is reflexive? Well, we look at the set that the relation is defined on, we look at every single element of that set and we check the relation to see if every element in that set is related to itself in that relation. In other words, remember another way to write this that's equivalent is we wanna make sure that x comma x is in the relation, right? 
all of these ordered pairs for every single element in S. If that's the case, then we say that the relation is reflexive. If it's not, then we say that it's not reflexive. And by reflexive, we can sort of think of, to remember this, reflection, right? X is looking at its own reflection in the mirror. X related to X, I don't know. All right, symmetric. A relation R on the set S is called symmetric if whenever X is related to Y, then Y is related to X. So this is a conditional statement, right? So first we're looking at our relation to determine if it's symmetric. We're gonna look at all of the ordered pairs in that relation, okay? And we're gonna see if the reverse ordered pairs are also in that relation. In other words, we're looking for every X related to Y, and we wanna make sure that if X is related to Y in this relation, then Y is also related to X. And symmetric, we can think of symmetry, right? We could sort of flip this. We have this kind of symmetry going on here. Again, I don't really know. Okay, transitive. A relation R on a set S is transitive if whenever X is related to Y and Y is related to Z, then X is related to Z. So another conditional statement, so we're going at our relation and we're looking at all these cases where we have the second coordinate of an ordered pair that is the same as the first coordinate of another ordered pair. Then we check to see if in that relation we have another ordered pair that has the first coordinate of this first ordered pair and the second coordinate of this second ordered pair. If that's the case for every single x related to y and y related to z, then we say that the relation is transitive and if it's not, then we say that it's not. So this is very non-trivial. I want to make this clear. This is not easy to learn at the beginning when you're first learning this stuff. I was very confused. That's okay. We're going to look at a bunch of examples. I really think looking at examples helps solidify our understanding of this. So we're going to look at six different relations. And for each one, we're going to go through and determine, is this relation reflexive? Is it symmetric? Is it transitive? So hopefully that helps. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I've defined six different relations on this set S, which is the set containing A, B, and C. We are going to look at one property at a time, so we're going to start with reflexive, and we're going to go through each of these six relations and determine which of these relations satisfy that property. So again, we're going to start with reflexive, and in fact, I think reflexive is the easiest to, to check for. So let's get right into it. Remember, reflexive means that X is related to X for every x in the set s okay and another way to write this which may be more useful or more clear is that this ordered pair x comma x is in the relation so first we look since this is, has to be true for every x and s first we look at our set s we have a b and c so what has to happen in order for a relation to be reflexive is that it has to have a a b b and c c all in the relation if one of them is missing, we can say that it's not reflexive and we don't even need to keep checking whether the others are there or not, right? So looking at this first relation, we can immediately tell there is no AA. Therefore, this is not reflexive. In fact, none of them are in there. AA, BB, CC, they're all missing. So I'm going to put an X if the relation does not satisfy the property and a check if it does. Here, we do not have AA. We don't need to keep checking, right? BB and CC are there, but we need to have all three. So not reflexive. Relation three, we do have AA, we have BB, and we have CC. So this is, in fact, reflexive. We'll put a check there. Relation number four, AA, BB, but we don't have CC. So this is not reflexive. AA, we don't have BB or CC. And this one, we don't have any of them. So that is not reflexive. So again, hopefully that makes sense. First, we're looking at the set. We look at all the elements in that set, and then we check whether all of those elements are related to themselves or not. And we go through each relation. So now let's check whether each relation is symmetric. And remember, symmetric means that if X is related to Y, then Y is related to X. It's a conditional statement. I've written it in this different form that's equivalent that may help us a little bit better in this context, okay? So how do we check whether each relation is symmetric? For symmetric, we don't go to the set the relation is defined on right? We go directly to the relation and typically we go to the first ordered pair in that relation. So AB, what needs to happen for this relation to be symmetric? Well, since AB is in the relation, we also need BA, 
right? That's exactly what this tells us. If x, y, then y, x. So since we know a, b is in the relation, we also need b, a, which we have. We don't need to check b, a now, right? We know the reverse direction is also going to be true, okay? Let's check this next one. Since we have c, a, we need a, c to be in this relation in order for it to be symmetric. We don't have a, c. So this relation is not symmetric. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's look at the next example. We have a, b. We need b, a. We don't have b, a. Okay, we have b, b, and b, c. So this relation is also not symmetric. Put an x there. For this third one, we have a, a. What does that mean we need to have? Well, it means we need to have a, a, right? So what we notice here is when we're checking for the symmetric property, we don't need to worry about these ordered pairs where the first and second coordinates are the same. Right, because if AA is in the relation, then the reverse is itself, which is always gonna be in the relation, right? So we can jump straight to AC. This means we need CA, which we do have. BB, we don't need to check. CA, we don't need to check because we already checked AC, and those sort of pair together, right? Hopefully you are seeing what I'm saying. CC, we don't need to check. This third relation is symmetric. We're gonna put a check there. This fourth one, AA, we don't need to check. AB means we need BA, which we don't have, not symmetric. Relation five, we have AA, we don't need to check that. AB means we need BA, which we don't have, not symmetric. AB means we need BA, which we don't have, not symmetric. So only one of our six relations was symmetric. So let's look at the last property, transitive. All right, so now let's check the transitive property. So remember, transitive. If x is related to y and y is related to z, then x is related to z. And I wrote it in this other notation because it may apply a little bit better to these examples. So if x, y is in our relation and y, z is in our relation, then x, z is in our relation. So what's similar with these two, right, with these two ordered pairs, is that the second coordinate of this one and the first coordinate of this one are the same. So that's what we do. That's how we check if a relation is transitive. We don't need to worry about the set. We go straight to the relation and we try to find two ordered pairs that match this, right? Where the second coordinate of an ordered pair is the same as the first coordinate of another ordered pair, which is the case here. B and B, right? These are the same. Second coordinate, first coordinate. So what needs to happen now in order for this relation to be transitive. Since AB is in the relation and BA is in the relation, I need AA to also be in the relation. Since AA is not in the relation, what we can say is that this relation is not transitive because this conditional statement does not hold in general for this relation. Hopefully that's making sense. So this relation is not transitive. Let's check the next one. Here we have AB and BB. So we have that second, first lining up and being the same. So what do we need? Well, we need AB, but that's this one here that we're considering, right? So what we should notice from this is that we don't need to consider these ordered pairs where the first and second coordinate are the same, because if we take those into consideration, what's gonna happen is what we end up needing, what we end up checking for is gonna be this other one here, right? AB, BB, what do we need? Well, AB, I already have that here, right? So we can actually skip over these ordered pairs when we're checking for transitivity. Okay, what else can we look at here? Well, A, B, B, C. So those line up. So what do we need? A, C, which we don't have. So this relation is not transitive. Hopefully you see why. We have A, B, and B, C, but we don't have A, C. Okay, so not transitive. Third relation, we can skip over A, A. Here we have A, C. We have C, A. We need AA then, which we have here. BB, we can skip over. Let's see, CA, AC, which means we need CC, which we do have. I think we're good here. This one should be transitive. Let's give it a check. All right, fourth relation, AB, BC. That means we need AC, which we do have. Let's see what else. BB, we don't need to worry about. BC. Well, we don't have any with the first coordinate of C, so we don't have to worry about this. AC, same issue. This one looks transitive as well, right? And really with transitivity, 
what you're looking for is if you can't find a counter example, right? If you can't find this situation where we have X, Y and Y, Z, but we don't have X, Z, then we say it's transitive. So sometimes there's examples where this conditional statement is sort of vacuously true, which we're going to get to in a second. I'm sort of spoiling the fun here. So let's look at this one. A, 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 B. So what do we need? A, B, which we have. Since we have A, B, well, there's none with the first coordinate of B, so there's nothing to check there. So this one's good as well. And this last one should be what I'm talking about with the vacuously true, right? Neither of these ordered pairs, right? None of the ordered pairs in this relation satisfy this X, Y, Y, Z condition, right? So what we say is, well, then it's transitive because it's not not transitive. It's sort of like that logic thing if you're going back to the truth table with the first statement, right? P implies Q, the first statement is false and the whole statement is true. Very related to that. We say that it's vacuously true, vacuously transitive, whatever you wanna call it. So really when we're checking for transitivity is we're really checking for whether a relation is not transitive in a sense, because that's usually what happens is when a relation is not transitive, we're able to find an example where we have X, Y, and YZ both in the relation, but we don't have XZ in the relation. If we can't find that counterexample where this statement fails, then we say it's transitive. And that includes kind of stuff that may feel weird at first, like these kind of examples. Hopefully these examples help when we show the full board. Hopefully this helped make sense of these properties and make sense of equivalence relations. So let's look, the only relation that has all three check marks is this one here, relation three. It is reflexive, it is symmetric, and it is transitive. Therefore, this third relation, relation three, is what we call an equivalence relation. None of the other relations are because they have to meet all three of those properties in order to be an equivalence relation. So this video is meant to mostly be an introduction to define these terms, to play around with some examples. In the future, we're gonna do some proofs. We're gonna look at how to prove a relation is an equivalence relation. I'm looking forward to that. But if you enjoyed this video, hit like, subscribe to my channel. If you have questions, leave those below. But most importantly, keep flexing those brain muscles, and I'll see y'all later.